arm bands, lads. Tasteful, I call it. We've done our best for him. I'm glad I put my thick of woolies on. Yes, it'll be a bit drafty in the cemetery. A sad day, Mr. Mayor. Hey, another bit of old Barfield passing from our midst. But you're putting him away very nicely, very nicely. It's a bit grim having the funeral from the warehouse. Old Broadbent always said that when his time came, he should go out from where he came in. And you know what the Broadbents are? Too mean to part with the steam off their own porridge. Young Cheney's not like that. I've never known him spend a shilling where a penny would do. Still, I suppose you know what it is you see in him, love. I'm giving him his chance. If Cheney Broadbent wants to marry me, I'm here. So that's why you were so keen to come back to Barfield. I couldn't make out why I left that job on the Yorkshire Post. Good prospect, but no Janie. Time we're going, Ethel. Oh, I nearly forgot. You wait and see. It's going to be different. I know it's going to be different now the old man's dead. Well, it's now or never, Ethel. Good luck to you. Plain brass handles on coffin. Those were his father's instructions. Everything just like he said. How much do you think he's left? Well, if he'd been in shoddy, I should have said about... Uh, 150,000? But seeing as how we were only a rag merchant. Not more than 40,000. Get away with you. I bet it's not a penny less than... 50,000? No, never. Hey, Limpy? I'm with the family. I'm not saying anything, but uh, I'll wager young Charlie will double it before his turn comes to lie there. Yeah, not if he dawdles over his business like he's doing now. Where is he? Hi, where is the lad, Mrs. Perkins? No, Mr. Arkwright, 60 shillings for that rate is too much. It's just chucking money away. But Charlie, lad, you must show some feeling for your old dad. It's him I'm thinking of. 60 shillings for flowers that'll be dead in a week. My dad had turned in his grave. But he's not there yet, Charlie, lad, and you must show some respect in getting him there. If it were left to me, I'd pay. But I tell you straight, Mr. Arkwright, he'd haunt me for the rest of my life. How about 55 shillings? Take it. Florist lad's waiting for his cash. You were worse than he was, not saying something. It's only 52 and 6. Aye, but Florist will be giving you a discount for cash, Mr. Arkwright. Damn it, man, we've all got to live. There's better ways of making a living than robbing the dead, Mr. Arkwright. <coughs> oh, excuse me, miss. Oh, Chaley, I just thought you might like to run your eye over the obituary. I wrote it myself. Uh -huh. You've given him a good spread, lass. You've done him justice. Justice, tempered with mercy. We're ready to move off, Chaley, lad. Right. Thanks, Ethel, love. Chaley. Chaley. You've been robbed. You've still been robbed. Why didn't you stand up to him like a man? Listen to me, Charlie. Dead in the flesh, I might be. But dead in the pocket, no. I'm going to feel quite lost. 
I'm not as far off as you might think, son. Always remember, a man's best friend is his pocket, and I've got my eye on you. And the money. I'll look after it. You'd better. You're the sole beneficiary, Chaley. A warehouse, stock, and the sum after duties paid of approximately, uh, 62,000 pounds. You think of what Duke Popper Wells dad left? I bet he was a shoddy man. It's them that make the real profits. My dad always said right business is shocking. It must have been. But I don't think you can have heard me right, Chaley. I heard you. 60,000 pounds. 62,000. Limpy. Well, I suppose you'll be spreading your wings a bit. New house. Car, maybe. 62,000 it was, Limpy. Not much to talk about, lad. We'll have to economize. We shall, that. Tighten our belts a bit, eh? Well, two or three notches for a start, Limpy. Come and see me when you've got the bailiffs in. All in all, Mr. Gidbrook. Thanks. You'll not be spending it. Not me. It took me dad too much making. Maybe we can double it. We'll have a good try, Limpy. You'll have to keep your eyes skinned. They'll all be trying to take it off you. Roast beef, mm -hmm. pudding, mm -hmm. potatoes, and cabbage. Just give me half portion for thrippence. So that's how you celebrate coming into a fortune, Mr. Broadbent. Oh, There's no use trying to throw sand in her eyes, Chaley. Not ours either. Come on, how much? Why? Offering to lend me some, Fred. Don't act daft, lad. We only want to know. So you can start borrowing off me and getting me to cut my price is nothing doing. What's the use of trying to keep it dark? It'll be in papers anyway. Well, you can wait till it is then. I can just see you queuing at Free Library to read it for nothing. Hey, what's this? This peep's all gristle. Good enough for a poor man like you. <laughs> well, it's robbery, bare face robbery. I shall ask you to knock a penny off for this. Yeah, I do that, lad. That'll be fortunes you save towards trip. What trip? A football trip. Cup final in London. Aye, and it's real value for money. Coach trip down, dinner at one of them slap-up hotels, and after the match, one of them reviews. I broaden your mind. There's a ticket going to begin for cash. Yeah. How much? Five pounds. Five pounds? You must think I'm made of money. It's a real education. All them chorus girls in their scanties. Not to mention them fan dancers. <laughs> I remember you last year trying to see around them fans. He <laughs> nearly put me neck out. <laughs> I wouldn't pay five pounds to hold the fans. Good lad, Chaley. You save your money for something that's of real value. It won't get better value than what we're offering. Stop badgering the lad. Chaley, when you're finished, I'd like a word with you in private. In private? Mm -hmm. Important. Yeah, not politics. My father always said, steer clear of politics, Chaley. You'll make more enemies than customers in town hall. No, it isn't politics. I've somebody to show you at Mayor's Parlour. Me, invited to Mayor's Parlour. Here it is, Chaley, Barfield's new civic centre. Swimming pool, creech. Ah, it's a grand toy, I suppose. Toy? Well, half of it's up already, you know that. Hey, this is a bit of all right. Ah, the kiddies' playground. It's been a pet scheme of mine to crown me year of office. Just think of it, Chaley. Seesaw, swings, all sorts of roundabouts. Like a little fair. That's it, Chaley. <laughs> Can't you see them getting strength in the little muscles and air into their little lungs? Uh, we might have a, a toy car track, even a model railway. Really? Do you know I've always wanted to drive a railway engine? Uh -huh. uh, and a sandpit with one of them slides. <laughs> Do you know, I've always wanted to be first down one of them. I wouldn't mind being second. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you hear the screams of delight of them little children enjoying themselves? Aye, now that you mention it, I think I can. But look, wouldn't it be a lot better if you had your playground over here? Then the kids could come straight into it from the creech. Shelley, great minds think alike. <laughs> I have something to show you. It doesn't look much like a playground now, but that's where my dream's going to come true. Can't you see it, Shelley? Well, yes, I can, but... Uh... I sandpit with its slide over there on the left, but leaving room for model rate. But eh? wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, it's just come to me. That's my land. I know it is, and we want it. You do? We do. Then you can have it. We can? Of course, for a good idea like yours. Hey, Chilly lad, I'm proud of you. Give us your hand. Yes, I like the idea, and if the price is good enough... 
price? Yes, the price is good enough. The land's yours. But I thought you'd be giving it, seeing as a whole. Giving it? Ah, a gift to the town for the money you make out of it. Uh, as a token of your, your civic pride after coming into so much chairly. I might have known it. You're like the rest after me money. No, chairly, lad. What's a bit of land when you a think? A bit of land? A quarter of an acre in the centre of the town? Do you know how many years my dad pushed a handcart uphill and down there before he could call that bit of land his? And you want me just to chuck it away? Well, now, the kids must have somewhere to play. Then they must learn to dodge traffic, like I had to. Good day, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Ethel, lass. Yes, Judy? Um, I've been thinking. Well, go on, Jelly. Well, now that my dad's gone and our Mrs. Perkins is getting that bad on her feet, I was thinking that we might, um... Well, Jelly, go on. Well, have you never thought we might as well get wet and be done with it, Ethel? Are you... Is, is that a proposal? Uh -huh. I reckon you could call it that. And you really think we'd be happy? You're sure you want to marry me? Damn it, we've been courting more or less since you left school. Now, Mrs. Perkins is not that cheap to keep on, you know. There's that insurance cards and housekeeping and... Cards? Housekeeping? Money? But what do you take me for? What sort of person do you think I am? Oh, Shady, I can't stand that awful noise another moment. For heaven's sake, can't we go somewhere else? Ah, right, last we can walk up cemetery path. Well, what's wrong with cemetery path? It's where my dad called to my mother. I bet he did. It's free. Ethel, you're not sulking, are you? No, no. I'm thinking. Hmm. What about? Us. Really, don't. Sorry. It's funny. Ever since I first started thinking about love and marriage, I've dreamed of the moment you'd ask me. Sad how life never comes up to your expectations. Well, I'm sorry if my proposals come as a bit of a shock to you. Shock? To find a man only wants you to save him on a housekeeper? You're impossible. <laughs> Chaley, can't you see? There's so much more in life than just scraping and saving money. A diamond ring you'll be buying her next, and inside 12 months you'll have three mouths to feed. Let her go before it's too late. Chaley, listen to me. Huh? If only you could be yourself, and not just someone who follows in his father's footsteps. What's wrong with my father's footsteps? You'd see if you could only get out of the rut. Because underneath, you're a sensible, generous person. Generous? Yes, generous. Oh, dear. If only you could broaden your mind. Broaden my mind. Get out a bit. See places, new people. Barfield isn't the whole world. And you really think that'll do the trick? I hope so. All right, then I'll do it. You will? Even if it costs me five pounds. Five pounds. Five pounds? Aye, I'll start Saturday. Saturday? Football trip. I'll go to London by gum I will. I told you it was real value for money. Well, I don't know. Oh, what 
more do you want? Football match, bright lights, and all this. Hey, come on, Chaley. There's some better stuff inside. My dad always said theatres were dens of iniquity. Nonsense. If you really want to broaden your mind, there's nothing like theatre. Well, I suppose it's all right if you say so. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen. So you know that as you grow, you'll have to lose your toys. Dolls go too. And when they do, they much prefer the boys. And the gentlemen all stop at the grown-up dolly shop. for boys to play with. Each little chick knows every trick. Walk right in and take your pick. Dolls, dolls, dolls for gentlemen, something to walk away with. Oh, how happy you could be. One of these on your Christmas tree. Choose your cute body rolls from our selection of gentlemen. And now our gorgeous girls, or rather our dainty dolls, are going to pass among you and pick their partners for the Dolly Polka. So go ahead, girls, and pick your boys. What do you say, Mayor Diggins? No, not me, lad. I shouldn't feel such a damn fool. Well, I wouldn't mind feeling a damn fool alongside one of them. <laughs> How about you? Neat waste can't persuade him, folks. Come on. <laughs> you follow well at your service. And I'm the Duchess of Devon. <laughs> Come on, lad. You don't want to wait. Come on. 
Shaley is one for you. Please be my partner. Well, do you mean it? Of course. Doesn't take long once we get started. Come on. this carry on. I've never been on the stage before. You're from the north, aren't you? How did you know that? Oh. <laughs> I don't know your name, miss. Just call me Ruthine. Ruthine. <laughs> Woo! <Woo-hoo! laughs> hey, you worship. If only the folks back home could see us now, Woo! eh? Dolly was fully done to Dolly Pumper. Penny bears and happy bears do Dolly Pumper. Do you know Barfield? I'm afraid not. It's Rags and Shoddy. I'm only up for the cup. I've never met an actress before. Do you like acting? When I can get it. But this isn't acting, really. I'm only doing it as a favor to the producer, Mr... Chaley. Call me Chaley. I could call Chaley. Me. If only my missus could see me now. It's Fred. My Fred. Oh. Come quick, it's our men on the telly. Hey, this is a bit of all right, Miss Ruby. Not any fun. This is the life. What? This is the life, I said. <laughs> Chaley, what would your dad have said? Now, ladies of the Follies, will you kindly express your appreciation in the usual way? Hey, you. Hey. What's the rush? What do you want? Oh, uh, my name's Broad, Bent. I don't care what your name is. Night. Good night, dear. Who are you calling for? Dancing or nude? Well, her name's night, Ruthine. Dear. Good night, dear. Hey, but she was lovely. She had fair hair. It, it shone like the sun. Yeah? Oh, it's all right, Ted. It's for me. What beautiful flowers. How sweet of you. Chaley, isn't it? Aye. I'm very hungry. Do we eat? Eat? Mm. Aye. Aye, all right. Good night, Ted. There's one born every minute. Good evening. Hello. How are you? Good What should we have, Chaley? Nothing I can read except the prices. Well, how about a little smoked salmon to stop? All right, thick or clear? Oh, no, don't have soup. The salmon's out of this world here. So are the prices. <clears throat> then after that, I think we'll have some cutlet daniel. What's that? Well, cutlets, cutlets, and agno is lamb. Why the heck can't they say lamb chops and be done with it, eh? <laughs> Cutlet d'agneau, pomme paille, petit pois, point asperge, no sweet of corn. Of course. What, no afters? A little camembert for monsieur. A camembert. May I suggest a little brie? Aye, some of that. Bonsoir, monsieur. We just ordered. It's your wine, monsieur. Oh, I'd like a pint of... Champagne. Oh, do let's have champagne. All right, champagne. Might as well be hung for a sheep as an agneau. Hey, chum. <laughs> oui, monsieur. Uh, how about this one? Il est très bon, madame. Oh, maybe we'll try that one. Merci, madame. It was very sweet of you to ask me here, Chaley. What a funny name. Oh, I was trying to tell you. I'm a mistake. Hmm? 
Well, the registrar was a southerner. When he asked me Christian name, my dad said to make it Chaley. You mean Charlie? That's right, Chaley. <laughs> Londoners never could understand plain English. <laughs> what do you do, Chaley? Me? I'm in rags. Rags? Aye. Rags and bones? No, no, I'm a rag merchant. I supply shoddy men. Well, what's shoddy? Don't you know anything in London? Shoddy men it grind the rags that ragmen supply and mix it with virgin wool for cloth manufacturing. Now, there's two types of And tell me, do you rag merchants make simply fabulous amounts of money? No. The shoddy men make the brass, the money. Ragmen like us, we live from hand to mouth. All right, there's no other word for it. Just hand them out. Well, shall we uh, dance? What now? Hmm. All right. I fancy myself as a bit of a dancer. Have a waltz, huh? One, two, three, one, two, three. Well, I think I can do that. <laughs> Hold me a little bit closer, Chaley. Uh -huh. You won't crush the shoddy. Uh -huh. I don't think you're a ragman at all. I think you're a pro. Oh, I don't know about that. It's just that I've never had anyone like you in my arms before. <laughs> Why have we stopped? The time. It's 10 to 12. And what of it? Well, the coach goes at a quarter past. I'll be stranded. Well, all right, don't panic, Cinderella man. We'll get you a taxi. Oh. Quickly, please. What? Here. Point to it. Point to what we had. Well, we had this. All right. And this. Uh, this. Uh, coffee and champagne. You're very bad at adding up, lad. Send it to me. Cutlet d'agneau, carni, fromage, café, beurre pico, one bottle. Chaley, please. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, monsieur. My mistake, monsieur. I got a bottle of sherry down in error. It should be six pounds and one shilling, monsieur. I am so glad you pointed it out to me, monsieur. Come on, Chaley. You haven't much time. You see, it's still not right. Hey, you're the boss? Yes, sir. Right. Two dinners and a bottle of champagne is five pounds, two shillings and sixpence. Now, what's the other 18 and six for? It is customary, sir, to make a 10% service charge. 10% uh -huh. of five pounds, two shillings and sixpence is 10 shillings and threepence, not eight.